Hello everyone, my name is Bruno Capuano and I am happy today because I have the chance to talk with you about machine learning. For this session we are going to talk about specifically Windows Machine Learning and Machine Learning.net. There are two big topics so 30 minutes is kind of a challenge but I hope that I can, I can give you a high level overview about what we can do with these new technologies. And that's me in the picture, that's my little girl, of course if she is with me you are going to find that uh, at some time I'm going to do some face recognition, I'm going to start to, to work with her and if you want to follow me, if you want to, to contact me, you can do this via my Twitter handle which is at elbruno or in my blog elbruno.com So, we've been talking a lot about machine learning, we've been talking about, about artificial intelligence and when, in example, a couple of months ago we were part of the Insider Dev Tour talking about these technologies, we started to basically encourage people to realize that even if they are, they are doing machine learning or not today, we are using this technology during these days. For things like, in example, when you pass by and use your phone to do a face recognition and you take a picture, your phone friend draws a frame in top of it to one of the faces, it's basically detecting faces. Other things like in Amazon, Netflix proposing you products, are recommendation and there are full scenarios there are tons of scenarios i don't want to, to cover all of them but these are stuff that we are using today so it's important for us to understand as a developer that we need to understand how this works and we need to move forward to see how we can embed these capabilities into our application and to be honest with you it's very, very, very easy because most of the people are afraid of machine learning. Most of the people are afraid of um, artificial intelligence. They think that they, they are going to take over the world. But let's start with something simple. Let's start with something easy, like an example. Let's create uh, an operation to detect chihuahuas in a photo, in a picture. So the first thing that we are going to do, of course, is going to somehow uh, detect a, a circle area here with the light brown colored with the face. Then we are going to aim for the eyes uh, and, the, and the nose, so we are going to try to find three darker points and at the end of the day when we create a function to do this we are basically going to create a function which allows us to detect chihuahuas or muffin because this is what we have right now, this is what we are doing. Uh, machine learning is an amazing technology, artificial intelligence is very advanced but still we are in a stage that we need to basically have someone looking at these things to see how they are going to work. And I don't have time to share a lot of scenarios here, but you can basically figure out how you want to do this. And the first thing that they want to share with you, I am a coder, I like to program, is to share with you how we can use this. So let me move forward and show you how WinML Windows Machine Learning works. So WinML is a, is a technology that was embedded in Windows 10 uh, in the April release on 2018 and basically it's a set of it's a set of APIs part of Windows 10 which allows us to use machine learning inside of application and the way that we can use this is to train machine learning models or to use machine learning models if you are a developer you need to think that the machine learning model is kind of a package that you can use you embed this package you use this package in your application and you can start to use it and a nice place to go and start to look for package is in example the Azure AI gallery in the Azure AI gallery we can go to models and we can start to figure out we we'll start to, to browse models so we have the alex.net the ResNet, these models are for image detection, so in example you can drop a picture there and they are trained to detect uh, persons, chairs, tables, windows, tons of stuff, so it's very easy. Again, it's kind of a black box where you can drop a picture and it's going to give you the results. The one that I'm going to use today is one to detect faces and emotion recognition. So, if I start my camera, you're going to see that, hey, hello, that's me here. And you see that I have detected, I have automatically detected the Windows 10 camera detect the face. Here, this is something that has been up and running and you are seeing this in cameras for a long, long time, detecting faces. And also you see that there are cameras who can detect the motion. This is not part of the Windows 10 and if we need to do this, sometimes we need to add an external library. There are several steps. Let me show you how this works with this model. So this is a model. And this is a model that if we don't load this model, it's going to be basically a, a 30 megabyte or something like this file with Onyx extension. I am going to get here later to explain this. And 
This model is a black box which has an input and an output. And the input is an image. It's basically an array of pictures, that, an array of numbers which represent the picture. And the output is an eight numbers array which goes, basically is going to give us information about these emotions, neutral, happiness, surprise, sadness, and the other one. And, and this is the position. So once you detect the face, it's going to analyze the face. It's very, very, very simple. An input and an output. The way that we use this, and I am going to do this in a Windows 10 application, in a standard Windows 10 application, is when we have installed the Windows AI tool for Visual Studio 2017, and by the way, I am using Windows Studio 2017 here, the, the preview, you can use the 2017 normal or even the new ones, the, the Windows, uh, the Visual Studio 2019, it works in the three of us, but when you install the AI tools, the artificial intelligence tools, you have the chance to, in example, when you add a model to, this is a model, the Onyx file, to your project, it will automatically create a class, which is kind of the wrapper of the model. And it will give, it, it creates a file with three classes, I'm sorry, and you are going to have here an input class, which is going to analyze, it's going to have the, the image. It's going to have an output, which is basically a float, a tensor float number, and a write of number. And it's going to have you also a class, which is basically the ones that help you to use this, this Onyx file. And the way that we are going to do this, I am not going to use this class, I'm going to explain you the code, is I have here, as I said, a simple, a simple Windows 10 file, which is only have in the code a camera. I am using the, the toolkit, the Windows uh, UWP toolkit to have a camera. And the nice thing about this is the only thing that I need to do is when the camera starts, I am going to, when the application starts, I am going to start the camera. And every time that I have a new frame, I am going to analyze the frame. I am going to do some defensive coding here, checking that if I have really a video frame there. And if I have the, the video, I am going to use these lines. This is 40 lines of code to analyze emotion. And let me show you what are we doing here. So it's very easy. First of all, I have my model part of my application. So I'm going to load my model. This is up to anyone what, how do you want to do this. You can load this in a singleton mode. This is a file inside the application, so it's up to you. Once you have the model loaded, the file model loaded, we are going to create a learning session. Then we're going to have some information about the session. Again, you only need to do this once time. You only need to do this the first time. Then you can reuse this session and time to time. And once you create, the input and the output, which is basically the image for the input and the array of number for the output. There are a couple of lines that you need to do. This is the standard foundation code that you need to do, but you are going to do some A hey, session. Let's evaluate these pictures. And once we have this evaluate, we are going to see how we are going to get the value. So if I run this application here, it's going to run very fast. Let me go my surprise phase. So I just put my surprise face here. You are going to see here that the output is a set of numbers. We have eight numbers here with different values. And I have a very high values in the second one and a negative value in the, in the, in the sixth one. So if I go back to the documentation, I will see that, oh my God, I'm supposed to be, I try to be uh, sad, but I get to, I'm sorry, I try to be surprised, but I go to sad, uh, happiness. And then I have some disgust there to see how we can do. So, Again, one lines of code and I have this. Of course, I need to clean this stuff. I can dig in the code. There are tons of demos there to how you can use, but it's very, very easy to have this up and running to see how you are going to do this. And the way that you are going to use Onyx, the, the place that you are going to use, your, there are several places that you can get these files. One is the Azure machine, the Azure AI gallery. If you are using Azure Custom Vision and you create your own models, you can export your models to Onyx files. So it's easy to reuse. If you are working with the data scientist teams and they have created models in with TensorFlow and they create CoreML or other formats, you can use the WinML tool to transform this to Onyx. And then you can go also to the Onyx repository. So this is kind of how Windows machine learning works. It's a, it's a set of APIs inside Windows 10 that help you to use this model inside your application. And by the way, you can use this in Windows 10 application, Win32, a standard Windows form or WPF application is an amazing, amazing stuff. And how about machine learning.net? So machine learning.net is a new set of tools that we have for.NET developers to do machine learning. And if you are a.NET developer, 
this is an amazing place to start because this is a different way to, to program things. This is a, a new way to do software. So standard in a standard way, we need we need to do some we need to create some operation or functions to detect faces in images or detect the, or predict the price of a share. These kind of things. We as a developers, we know the deals and we know the inputs. We create the logics for the output and we work on the logic and the, until we have the desired output. In the machine learning work world this is completely different the way that we are doing this is we are starting to work on what we call is the machine learning training or model which is we create a model and based on and i am not going to go deep here we don't have time for this but we are going to use a standard model and trainers that they are part of the machine learning community and we start to train this using this trainer it's under model saying dropping images and saying hey this image has a face this image has a face, this is not a face, this is not a face, and we do this so on, so on, so on, and at some moment the model will be smart enough to, if we drop to the to the model a new image, it's going to say back to us, hey, I am 25% sure that this is a face here. 25% is low, so we are not happy with this, so this is not a face, and if it says something that I am 95% sure that this is a face, hey, it seems to be a face. So it's a different way that we can create an application. We are not going to program the logic, we are going to use trainer, which basically using the set of data, they are going to train a model to become much, much more uh, uh, smart. And by the way, everybody thinks about this is kind of automated machine learning training. There is still a lot of work to do there. there. And the type of thing that we can do with machine learning, there are several things. We can do classification, A or B, an example. If I have a picture, this is a face or not a face. We can do predictions, weather prediction based on history information. We can say, hey, this is the weather that is going to be tomorrow. And we can also go for, there are a couple of ways that we can do training, machine learning, supervised training, where we have data and labeled data. And if we don't have labeled data, we have kinds of disorganized data. We can do unsupervised training, which is basically a couple of trainers which are going to detect pattern in our data and they're going to use this for clustering. So this is very useful for security because if you have users which always do ABC, ABC, it's a, at some moment one of the patterns change and you have ABD, hey, you might raise a warning there and say, mm, this is not what we are expecting. So this is the type of thing that we, you can do. And the ABC of how machine learning works is of course, data. And with data, we spend a lot of time because the the accuracy and the quality of the model, it's all going to depend on the data that we choose. So we need to work on the data, clean the data, understand the data, make the data very, very relevant for us. Once we have the data, we are going to build the model and we are going to use machine learning for this. There are tons of applications. There are tons of frameworks and tools like TensorFlow, Cognitive Toolkit, Cafe. There are tons of stuff there. If you are a .NET developer, Machine learning on that is an amazing place to start because you don't need to learn the, the framework. You don't need to learn how to use a new language or a new platform. You already know .NET, you already know how to work with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or Rider or whatever you're using. So it's a nice place to only do machine learning. And once we train the model using machine learning.net, you can go and evaluate this model. Again, this is going to be a standard model, which is a file. We can use this file as we've seen in the Onyx scenario. We can export to Onyx. There are tons of things that we can do. And this is the important part, again and again and again. If you are a .NET developer, and I've been a .NET developer, this is amazing. You are used to do desktop, web, cloud application. Now we can use machine learning application. And the main idea of the machine learning application is that, in example, in the Microsoft stack, we have a set of uh, public uh, APIs in the cloud, which are cognitive services, and which are very good to do some to, to cover machine learning scenarios related to vision or to speech or to language. Like in example, if we use these lines of code, we can analyze this sentence here, say this vacuum cleaner sucks so much dirt, and it's going to say that, hey, this is 9% positive. So it's not a very good positive emotion detected here in this sentence. However, if you are finding this in a vacuum cleaner, in a vacuum forum, it's amazing. Someone is talking about the vacuum and say, so, so much there. So you need to create your own model. The, the prepackaged ones are not going to, to work. So this is the moment that instead of going for the pre-built models, we need to go for custom models. There are a lot of options here, TensorFlow, CNTK. Let's go for machine learning. And again, this is the ABC of what we are going to do. Prepare data, build and train, and run. 
I like my samples. I like the code, so I go directly here to write, uh, to, so you can understand this using a couple of lines of code, how machine learning.net works. Okay, let's do some coding. I am going to create a, a machine learning sample from scratch, and I'm going to use a .NET Core console application. And it's .NET Core, so you probably know that the nice thing about this is you can use it on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, whatever. And this is the standard one. If you, need, if you want to use machine learning.net, the only thing that you need to go is you need to go to a NuGet and you are going to see that if you search package for Microsoft.ml, you see a lot of packages here from Microsoft Machine Learning and you have ones to work with Onyx, which I've talked about Onyx, or with TensorFlow, or doing some specific uh, CPU activities. And this is a standard application that we have. It's only have machine learning.net and .NET Core installed. And the, the only, I, I added here a couple of classes. I am going to get here soon and I am going to start working with this Excel file. And this Excel file has a, has a couple of lines here and it all started when I was doing one of these uh, demos for machine learning and there was a lot of background noise and my kids and a couple of friends were in the, kid, in, in the swimming pool. So I decided to use this as a standard sample for this. So what we have here is 12 rows, 11 rows because we have the header here and each one of the rows has the name and names, a gender and a label. And the label is basically, uh, is this a kid or is this a baby? And it's right now we are going to, going to get this a little more complicated later, but it's basically the, the, the background <laughs> business rule for this is three years old or younger is a baby, anything else is a kid. So we are going to train a model, we are going to write a couple of lines of code to train this model and then we are going to change the data here so you can see how with new data the model is becoming much more intelligent or intelligent. So the first thing that I need to do, and uh, I am going to do some copy paste here, I don't, we don't have time to write this from scratch, is we are going to create, remember that the first step is load the data and I am going to load the data directly from my file. My file is here, it's already defined in two. It's already part of my project. It's going to be copied to the to the output project, and I am going to create a machine learning context, and then I am going to use in the context. I'm going to use a text reader, and this text reader has all of the fields that I am using in my CSV file. And by the way, I am doing this, uh, and I the, the fun here that I have my header, I have my separator. But if I want to load my data from any other data source. Cosmos DB, a local SQL server file, Hadoop, whatever else we have, we can use this. And this is the amazing, one of the amazing features of machine learning, that we can reuse everything that we have in the .NET world, world to be part of what we have. So I am going to load my data and I am going to start working here. So the first thing that I am going to do is load the data and I'm going to train my model. I forgot here my load, my load line, so I'm going to copy this from one of my previous events. I always forget this line. It's just two seconds. So as I said, I am going to load this and I'm going to say, hey, load this from the path, which is basically my the location of my file. Then I'm going to train my model. And this is the, the 10 lines, which are very basically very important for us. Because what we are going to do is we are going to define, based on the data that I have, how we are going to arrange my features and my labels to get there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to concatenate, I'm going to define that my features are going to be my age. Remember that in our set of data, I am going to get a label, I am going to identify a label based, based on the age, and the age is a number. So that's fine. Then I am going to map a value to a key of the value of the column label. That's because each one of these values, kid, kid, baby, baby, kid, 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 is a text. And in machine learning, we need to transform everything to numbers in order to move forward. So I am going to transform each one of the values of, of the key, to, of the label, I'm sorry, to a, to a key. And then I am going to choose a trainer. In this case, I am going to use the SDCA, which is a stochastic dual coordinate custom for this. But there are tons of trainers that I can use here. 
And this is all the ones that we have for multi-class classification. I can go here with one versus all, the SDCA, other. I can even go farther here and instead of doing multi-class classification, I can do binary classification if I only know. This scenario so probably is binary because it's kid or, <clears throat> or baby because we are going to change this later and going to live like this, but there are tons of trainers. So what I am doing here, I am using the concept of a pipeline and this is each one of the steps that I am using in the pipeline. Then I am going to say that in my predicted label, what uh, value, I need to basically convert the predicted label that I predict to a value again. Remember, this was transformed to a number, need to be a strand again. And then I am going to create my model. I'm going to fit this pipeline to create my model. And I also have here, I didn't talk about this, but I also have here a couple of classes which uh, the type of elements that I am using, which are the ones that I'm going to use in the in the final part, which is, hey, let's do some predictions. Let's try to predict some, some values, some new values based on the information that I have. So in order to do this, what I am going to do, I am going to create a new function. This is a function, the function that I am creating here. And this function is going to use these classes, age range and age range prediction, age range has name, age, gender, and label, prediction has the label, and it's going to basically do a prediction and write this prediction in the console. And the way that I am going to use this is very, very easy. Let me go back to my code here. I am going to create a function from my model. This is the model that I just trained, and I start to do some predictions. So. Let's finish this. Let's put a stop there and let's debug, let's debug step by step to see how we are working on what we have here. So of course, the first thing that we are going to do is it's going to, to train to load my data. It's very easy. Then it's going to add, it, add each one of the steps that we have here. In the, in the model, and it's going to train the model. And the train model option action is very fast. I have a powerful machine here, but I am only working with 12 rows. If I pick up a data sample scenario where I have tons of rows, uh, millions, billions, or terabytes of data, you need to think how we are going to do this. But again, this is 50 lines of code to do this. So I have my function here, so I, I can do prediction here. So what's happening if I have a new kid which is going to be Jeff, two years old, or as a male. So let me go here and see what it's going to do. Let's step in here. I am going to create a new class. This class has all of the required values that we have, age, gender, label, and name. And I am going to do the prediction. And the prediction said that for this two years old, it's going to be a baby. So I write this in my console application. I started to have this. And you probably know the deal from here on. I am doing my predictions here and I don't care about the name, I don't care about the gender yet, I only care about the, the age, and I see that for two years old it's a baby, for nine years old it's a kid, three years old it's a baby, five is a kid. So my model seems to work. My model seems to work fine here, and this is something that I can do. And let's review what we just did. We load the data from a CSV file, this is a very simple set of data. We train the data, and then with the trainer data, choosing a trainer, we do a couple of magic in, inside so we can have the, <coughs> so we can use the age and the label as the two main lines. And then we, <coughs> we start to do predictions using my body that I just created. So that's basically it. That's basically the ABC of machine learning. But this is a very simple scenario. Let's make it a little more complicated. So if I change this, if I add a new, a new Excel file, I have here another file. And this file has a couple of differences here. This file has, instead of talking about babies and kids, we have babies, three years uh, or, or younger. And instead of talking about kids, we have boys and girls. So here I can say that uh, a male 10 years old is a boy eight year old female is a girl. So I have to keep a, a little more complicated scenario here to, to work with. And I also have somewhere here teenagers. So I can do some kind of teenagers uh, information. So uh, teenagers categorization. So let's do this. Let me change my, my CSV 
to use the second one and let's use also the gender because we are we are not using the gender here we are only using the age to do the, the training so let's change these lines to use also the the gender so we, we can see what we do so again this is what we are doing right now the first thing that, the first thing that we need to do is convert the gender to to featureize the gender because remember that the gender is a string and we don't work with a string we work with gender is an M or an F or whatever, and we work with number. So we basically said that we need to featureize our, <coughs> our, our column gender. Then our features to work here are going to be the age, it's already number, that's fine, and the new gender, the featureized gender. And this is going to be the feature that we're going to have. We do again the map label to key, we do again, we use the same trainer, and we use here the, the fit. So it's basically the same model, but if I go here and start to add a couple of sample lines here, I will do just one. I will put, uh, I don't know, uh, eight years old male, eight years old female, and I will put here three and four, and I will put here a baby again, and I will put here somewhat 15 years old female, Let's see what is up. I am going to run directly here. All my project is going to be the same as, as before. Very fast, very, very forward. Let me go here. Oops. Step by step, train, train, model punto pipe, train. Oh, I am probably not copying this, my file to the, yes, I need to copy my file to the, to the location, so let's do this again, faster, 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 fit, couple of seconds later. My model is trained, and then I am going to start to do predictions. And I am not going to get it here, we've already seen this, but let's take a look at the results. I have baby, I have girls for nine years old female, I have a teenager for 15 years old female, I have a girl here for eight years old female. I have a boy here for eight years old male. So I add a new column here and my model starts to get smarter and smarter. And I can even go here and start to add information. Like an example, let me put myself, Bruno, I am 42 male and I'm going to go for old dude. Let me put here, I don't care about the order. This is my brother. This is my other brother. I can go here and add. She's not going to be happy about this, but I can add my wife, uh, old lady, and let add one of my sisters, like old lady here. So I add more information, and if I start to add more test so an example let me add test file and text six and i will put test five somewhere from 29 years old female and text six is 38 uh, female and let's do one more just in the sake of what we have let's put this one this dude this is going to be i don't know 82 female also and run the scenario i hope i save the the file Let's see this if I'm not I'm going to run again. But the idea here is that you can see how fast is it going to have this. And we can have all do all lady, all do all lady. So this is the standard ABC of how you can use uh, machine learning. And the nice thing about machine learning.net, and this is almost there, is that you can train your system. There are plenty of scenarios that you can get in GitHub here to do sentiment analysis, issue classification, image classification and tons of things. And you know what? Also, this is open source. Right now, we are in the version 0.8 in SimpreView. But if you go here to the .NET Machine Learning repo, you can find amazing things here. And I really, really encourage you, I really, really suggest you to go there and to see how they are working. So this is basically it. it thank you very much. There are no time for Q&A, but feel free to send any information, any question for me and my blog or my Twitter at thebruno.com. And hey, 
See you in the next one. As always, it's a pleasure. Goodbye.